using the basic shapes might feel still a bit unfamiliar to you because it's a new way of seeing when you break down the motif into simple parts by ignoring the rest of it. So it might feel a bit weird for you to start a drawing with a ball and a cylinder instead of eyes, hair and four legs. And that's okay. So the most important part here is that you give this approach a try and that you get a feeling for this drawing method so that you can better estimate whether you enjoy using it or not. So both ways are okay. And the best way to find this out is to draw by using the basic shapes. So I have another example here for you. Sketchbook and pencil ready? Let's get started. Avoid looking at the pattern of its fur. Ignore the eye. Don't feel tempted to start with the shape of its flippers, but start with the most simple and basic lines first. The first line that comes to my mind instantly is the definition of its skewness. As the penguin is walking, its upper body is slightly bent forwards. We need to integrate this information before we even start drawing the basic shapes because it defines the exact position of the parts of its body. Based on this line, we can add the basic shapes that help us defining the proportions of the penguin. These shapes aren't predefined ones. It's up to you to choose those shapes that help you most to structure the motif. In this case here, with the round shapes of its body, ellipses seem a good help. I'm using one for the definition of the head, one to capture the roundness of its upper body and one ellipse for the lower part of its body, including the walking hind leg. Based on these guidelines, we are sketching the penguin now to get on the sketchbook. I'm starting right away with the line that indicates the skewness of its pose, so that I don't have to pay so much attention to the fact 